Fluvogs are excellent stage footwear because you can jump up and down without getting tired. They have high heels for glamour and they come in all kinds of outrageous colors and styles so that people will freak out and go, oh my God, your shoes i have to love your band too don't take candy from strangers don't get in the back of a van don't date naughty dirty boys avoid musicians as much as you can but break your heart just to write a song they don't roots for fits for that rats for wrongs steal your cash for guitar strings cheat on you with groupie flings rage your fridge for rehearsal fuel hit on your friend yeah it is cool smack your ass in spandex pants make you fill out those factor grants i've been playing in the city for about uh, oh. six, seven years as a drummer. We tried to start an all-girl punk band and it like blew up in our faces. Like right so away. me and her work really well together. I've been performing since 1981. I was 10 years old in 1981. I've been performing since New Year's Eve 1993. What inspired you to start? Collecting records when I was in high school because I didn't play an instrument. And then when I was 18, I got some money for my birthday and I bought a guitar. What about musicians? Squeeze. Number one, actually. Squeeze. I got interested, like everybody else, I think, by people like the Beatles and the Knack and uh, Queen. So it started out musically, I guess, when I was about 16. And then by the time I was mid-17, I was <clears throat> super political dude. I was a Trotskyist and I was in a Marxist punk rock band. So it, it turned out to be a vehicle, sort of lyrical vehicle, for political ideas more, more than it was music. And I think that stuck with me for a very long time, even through the lowest of the low, early lowest of the low stuff, I really considered the melodies and stuff sort of just vehicles to get the words out. And I've since, you know, that's changed around again, and I don't think that way as much. It's more balanced, but certainly that was the, the first to mid part of my career was about politics. And you know what? You would have kicked the shit out of me in high school. You yeah. would have killed me. I still might. Well, like me, it's a lot of blues. Like I, I love like Otis Rush and T-Bone Walker and Helen Wolf and like those. To, like the electric blues, you know. Growing up in the Northwest Territories, I jammed a lot of like punk and metal with, you know, like whoever I could, because I was like the only female uh, uh, musician up there in, in Hay River. So I'd have to go search for like 30 year old men to let, allow me to drum with, like, <laughs> so, well, because I was drumming back then, so to play with them. I used to listen to a lot of punk rock back in high school, and like I would, grew up listening to Frank Zappa and stuff. Like, my dad would just play that shit all the time, and Nina Hagen and Laurie Anderson, and like more like new wave and punk and just like weird prog rock shit. I like, talk about rambunctious. Oh, yeah, and rambunctious. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, I'm actually. I started playing with a dude called uh, Michael Luce Johnson, and uh, he. This is how I started playing drums, actually. It was in a punk band called The New Kings when I was uh, barely 16 years old, and he's like, I need a drummer, and I want to learn how to play bass. Like, you're gonna, you, you look like a drummer. You're gonna be a drummer in my band. I'm like, I have absolutely no idea how to fucking play drums. I have a tons of best moments, but uh, Steve was mentioning Massey Hall, the Lost Below uh, tour in 2010, I think. We started off, played the Toucan, which was 60 seater in Kingston, an Irish pub. So the tour started at the Toucan and ended at Massey Hall, which was a very lowest of the low way to do a tour, like just sort of venues of all sizes. But the Massey Hall show was great. Oh, also my dad outside took a took a photograph of, uh, I think it said Neil Young, lowest of the low, Paul Simon. <laughs> so that wasn't too bad. I've never played there. I'm the only guy. People point <laughs> You're at me the only the guy street. in the world. I'm the only guy. People point at me in the street. Mommy, there's the guy Massey who's Hall. never played Massey Hall. I would say I had a couple of great gigs in England where just everything clicked and everyone was just dead silent. I played this big sort of cathedral thing in England once. I forget, <laughs> somewhere near London. 
That was awesome. And I taped it and then I lost the tape. And then I actually sold out my only show ever, which is in a little place, but it just felt good to sell it out. It's just exciting to show people like what you've been doing and hope that they like it and they get something from it, I guess. That's like the biggest part of performing for me. For me as a performer, I don't know, like what I love is just being on stage and just rocking out and having that opportunity to share my music with other people besides and just myself, <laughs> you know, like. And this is a really goofy kind of project, like we both have other bands that are a bit more serious and this is just like, we can swear and talk vulgar and yeah. talk about, you know, Fucking like tits, sex you know, and rock and roll. <laughs>